Okay, this video is uh, actually one that was requested uh, a couple months ago by one of my YouTube viewers, uh, finally getting around to it here. And what we're going to look at is uh, the voltage and current relationships in capacitors and inductors. Uh, you often hear, you know, the, the relationship such that uh, the, well, the current leads the voltage in the capacitors and it, uh, the current lags uh, the voltage in inductors. What does that all mean? So we're going to talk about that and actually show it to you. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit first and then we'll go actually make some measurements on the scope over here with some stuff on the breadboard. Okay, so let's first uh, talk about capacitors. Uh, capacitors, as you know, are just uh, two plates separated by an insulator. So from a DC standpoint, it's an open circuit. Uh, so the only time current flows, you know, in or out of the leads, you know, of a capacitor is if the voltage is changed across it, right? Because if the voltage has, or excuse me, if the capacitor has some voltage across it, it's because there's some charge. Some excess electrons on one plate and some lack of electrons or excess holes on the other plate will create a voltage. If you need, want to ch change that voltage, you've got to change the amount of charge on the plates. So as you change this voltage, we're going to be removing charge or putting charge back on, and that constitutes current flow. So that's why there's current flow in capacitors for AC signals, but for DC, it looks like an open circuit. So let's, let's take a little bit more closer look at that to see how that relationship works. Let's say we're going to apply a, an alternating voltage to that capacitor. Okay. Now, if the voltage is sitting still, is not moving versus time, that means there's no movement of charge. Okay. So at points in time where the voltage is not moving or is changing very slowly, the current is very low. So if we look at, say, a sinusoid, where, say, the voltage is kind of reaching a peak, it's kind of sitting still here for a while, it's not moving, at that point, there's going to be very little charge moving on or off the capacitor. So we can say that's going to be essentially be zero. Okay. Now, on a sinusoid, you've got the fastest amount of change, uh, excuse me, the fastest change in voltage versus time occurs as we cross through zero, like when we come up and when we come down. So we're during those you know, fastest changing voltage versus time areas, we're going to have the most amount of current that we're moving in through that capacitor because it's the most amount of charge we have to move. We've got to move a lot of charge quickly in order for this voltage to change quickly. So at the time when the voltage is crossing through zero, we're going to have the maximum amount of current. Okay, so that might be a point like right here. Okay. So, uh, so we know that when we, we level off, the current goes to zero. In this case here, the voltage is coming down very quickly, so we're now we're pulling charge off that capacitor quickly. So that's going to be a maximum of current down here. Now the rate of change of current is getting slower and slower, and now down here the rate of change of current is essentially, a z or voltage is essentially zero. So our current again goes through zero and vice versa. So if we connect all these dots, let's see if I can kind of do this without looking through the camera. Okay, we can kind of get a plot that looks like this. So if we look at that, this looks like, you know, this sine wave, okay, but it's shifted over in this direction, okay. So essentially this peak is occurring before that one, so we can say that the current is leading the voltage, okay. If you look at both these waveforms, we say the current waveform is occurring, or the peaks are occurring first before the voltage peaks. So we say the current is leading the voltage, okay. So let's look at uh, capacitive circuits, or excuse me, inductive circuits. Now here it actually makes more sense to talk about current first because, you know, an inductor is just a wire. So uh, at DC it looks like zero, zero resistance, right? So anything that's you know, ideally zero resistance, okay? So if you, regardless of that current, if the current isn't changing, okay, it's going to have zero volts across it, okay? But how do we generate voltage across just a coil of wire? kind of goes back to remember the old experiments that you did with uh, creating an electromagnet with a wire around a nail and you kind of learned this thing called a right hand rule that if you kind of said well this is a wire I put put that wire in my hand my right hand and I curl my fingers around it and my thumb is pointing in the direction of the current my fingers are showing the direction of the lines of magnetic flux going around that wire okay and anytime lines of magnetic flux cut through a wire okay that causes a current to flow okay and anytime you change the amount of current that flows through a wire the amount of magnetic flux going around that wire changes so by arranging a wire in a coil if you change that current 
now you're going to create a, a new current or and essentially develop, develop a voltage across this inductor that's going to try to oppose that change in current. One way to think about inductors is they tend to try to keep the voltage across them constant, or excuse me, the current through them constant, and they'll do that by changing the voltage with respect to how the current happens. So here's the way to think about that. Okay, and again, if uh, the current is not changing, kind of the same situation we had here, where the current is not changing, um, then essentially um, that's when there's no voltage across an inductor, right? Because if, uh, if you just have a constant current through this, the magnetic lines of uh, flux are not changing, okay, and therefore we're not inducing any voltage, and ideally a zero ohm resistor resistance, we'd have essentially zero current flow during the, you know, the points where the voltage is not really changing. Okay. Now similarly, when we have a, the maximum amount of current change, we're going to have a lot of change in that magnetic flux going around that wire, and that's going to induce you know, the, the most amount of voltage change trying to oppose that current change. Okay. So you have the same kind of a thing. At these zero points is where we'll have these maximas okay, uh, in the current. Okay. So now if we connect those dots, okay, we have our sinusoid, but now what we can see if we look at the current with respect to the voltage, we could say, well, if we look at when the peaks occur, the peak of the voltage is occurring here, the peak of the current is occurring here. So the, vol the current is now lagging the voltage. Okay. So remember, the, in capacitors, the current leads the voltage. In capacitors, the current lags. So let's uh, go take a look at this experimentally. It's actually pretty easy to do. Okay. So here's our quick measurement setup. What we're going to have is a signal generator. Okay, and I've got that signal generator up there. We're just using that old leader uh, function generator up there. Okay, and he's he's generating a, a sinusoid, and um, and what I'm doing is I set up a very simple circuit like this. Now the unfortunate thing is I don't have a current probe here to actually measure the current on the oscilloscope. So what I'm doing is I'm using a small resistor. I'm using a 100 ohm resistor. Okay, and I'm I'm plugging that into channel two. Okay, so remember the voltage and current relationship in a resistor are always in phase. The voltage goes up, the current goes up, the voltage goes down, current goes down. So this is essentially just a current sense resistor. So the voltage across that resistor is just proportional to the current going through it. Makes sense. Okay, so now channel 1 is going to be probing the voltage across essentially our device under test, which in this case I'll start off with a resistor, but we'll replace that with a capacitor and inductor. So it's measuring the voltage impressed across this, and then this is measuring the current below it. Now what I've also done is chosen this resistor to be about 10 times lower than the device I'm testing, and also the, the capacitive or inductive reactance of what I'm testing, so that its impact is minimal on it. I'm just using it as a current sense. Okay, So we'll start off by looking at this situation where I, I put a 1,000 ohm resistor in here. So that's what I've got on the breadboard here. Uh, there's my 100 ohm resistor, there's the 1000 ohm resistor, this is coming in from the signal generator, and that's channel, the probe going to channel 1, probe going to channel 2, okay, and if we look over at the scope, channel 1 is the yellow trace, channel 2 is the current trace, or channel is uh, the current, so we can see as the voltage goes up, and cur uh, the current goes up, voltage goes down, current goes down, just as you'd expect, okay. So let's now move these and create this circuit, I'm going to replace this okay with this circuit here I've, I've got a capacitor here that at the test frequency we're running at this capacitor is about one kilo ohms of a, a capacitive reactance okay so if we move our probes and things like that over here let's uh, move this probe over to the capacitor let's move the signal generator over to the capacitor and now if we look at the scope okay we can see that this is our applied voltage the yellow but now we can actually see the current flowing through this is actually leading, right? The peak of that current is occurring before the peak of the voltage. The peak of the current is occurring before the peak of the voltage. Okay. And the reason we can do that is because this is a series circuit. You know, all the current has to flow down here. Okay, it's all in one path. So the current flowing through this resistor is equal to the current flowing through this capacitor. So this makes a, a decent current probe uh, for what we're looking at. So it's very easy to see that with a capacitor, the current leads the voltage. If we change this uh, over to the inductor here now, let's move my probe over to the inductor. Okay, and now we look at the relationship. Now we can see that here's the voltage, here's the current. Clearly our current is lagging uh, the voltage. 
So it's a very simple experiment that you can set up and show and prove to yourself that uh, you know, in capacitors the current leads the voltage, in inductors the current lags the voltage. And it's very easy to set up with these circuits uh, to go prove that to yourself. I hope that was helpful.